hope. I hope with the highest of hopes that I never have to go back to the trap and my days are dealing with dope. So I, 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 I only spit fire and dope. So later on you can go quote my lines to your people and folk. And they say, dang, that boy be spitting that pressure. And he be smoking that pressure. Hello and welcome to Once More With Feeling, Run The Jewels 3. Third album, funnily enough, from Run The Jewels. So, again, we're going a bit outside of our comfort area because this is another rap album, or hip-hop rap? Hip-hop rap. One of the two. It, it's weird. We do... We know enough about the two genres to know the difference, but we're never quite sure when that difference is made. Yeah, neither of us are hugely knowledgeable when it comes to rap. On the other hand, like Ed knew about Tech 9 beforehand last time, I have listened to... Pretty much everything went into put out and enjoyed it, so this is my kind of side of things. Yeah, um, I've only heard like two, maybe three tracks from them before, but I enjoyed what I heard, and it's definitely seemed up my alley, so... We'll give it a shot, and then do a review of it, because that's kind of what we do. <laughs> uh, um, for those few people who do listen to this regularly, and for anyone new, we are going to be aiming to get new reviews done every two weeks. So, first review of this year, and in another two weeks, we'll have the next review. Um, don't know what yet, but hey, we'll find out. We'll have a look at what's coming out, and... Well, you know, there's quite a lot of stuff coming out I'm interested in, but most of them are just scheduled to a release date of... 2017. Yeah. Really Some of them are scheduled for 2016, but still haven't happened, so it's even less. Some of them are scheduled for 2008, but they're still not out, Tool! <laughs> Freaking Tool. They're never released the next album, I swear. <laughs> uh, meanwhile, I'm also waiting for Quatch Luster stuff. Yeah. But as I said, it'll be done when it's done. Yeah. Gonna be another Winter Sun, I reckon. Well, Time 2's still not out either, so. The yeah, keeps posting on his page, like, oh yeah, uh, you were working on it, and then not really saying much else. Yeah. I say Winter Sun because in that case, at least the wait was worth it, as opposed to, say, Chinese democracy, where it was just... I don't know, I mean, Time 1 just didn't do it for me as much as uh, the first album did. Yeah. It was good. Something felt really off about it. I think it must have been the mastering or something. It just felt weird. Something sounded a bit off. And it wasn't even because it was like a pirated copy or anything. I copied it from my friend's CD directly, so... To be fair, I need to re-listen to that album. I might think differently now. It's been a few years. <laughs> it's been a while. I was hoping to you know, wait until Time 2 came out, but that could be forever. <laughs> anyway, getting back to topic. So, yeah, uh, Run the Jewels. It, if you don't know them, they're... It is a two... Uh... Two artist duo. Yeah. Of course, it would be a two person duo, but you know what I mean. Yeah. <laughs> Between LP and Killer Mike. The names? Um, and that's EL-P as opposed to LP like the record. Yeah. Well, it probably is derived from that. Yeah. Although it does mean something else as well. I can't remember exactly what it is. I looked it up by half an hour ago and I would have forgotten. <laughs> <laughs> Always the way. Um, I'll just have a look. Uh, anyway, yeah, um, I have heard both Run the Jewels and Run the Jewels 2, and, you know, totally original titles, sir. But, hey. but, yeah, this is actually a really solid album. The first album, it was pretty good, but it didn't really catch my attention that much, but I'm hoping to went back to it after I listened to Run the Jewels 2, which I really enjoyed, so. Mm. Whether it just wasn't as good, or whether they changed style or something, or whether I just need to listen to it more. Because the second album definitely grew on me over time. I've only recently got the first one, so... As I say, I've only listened to a couple of tracks of theirs, so I don't know the ins and outs of how good for the first two albums were. I definitely recommend listening to One of the Jewels 2. Mm. Probably One of the Jewels as well, but One of the Jewels 2 is the one that stands out. Yeah, I've got both of them downloaded, so... Um, now, this is admittedly a bit of a weird situation, because this album was released last year, but digitally, and the physical format was is going to be released this year. Yeah, it's a two-week gap or something like that, or maybe even more than that, actually. Uh, let me just... Well, I think the 17th isn't the release date, which is you know, more than two weeks into 2017, to it last one or two weeks, but... Um... <laughs> or is it the 13th? It's one of them. Uh, it's 13th. What's on the 17th? I saw something's coming out on the 17th. Oh, it's New Clarice album. Ah. Um, I knew something came out on the 17th. 
Yeah, we can cover that next. Well, I get my copy finally arrives. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it's, it's sort of like, uh, so how do we address this? Um, well, technically, it's going to be available for everyone by 2017, so we might as well cover it then. Yeah, I suspect you can probably find it in a regular shop. I mean, to find the other two in HMV. So, mm. if you're from the land of Britbong, then you'll probably find it in HMV. Well, you're in London or something. I haven't really seen it outside of London that often. Um, yeah, just looked it up. Uh, LP is originally El Producto. Ah, yeah, that's right. Um, it makes sense that it'd be Spanish styling because his real name is Jaime. I'm never quite sure how to pronounce uh, Spanish surnames. Um, Meline? Melin? Meline? Uh, I don't know. You're, you're on the Spanish blood here. So. Yeah. I learnt Spanish and I, I'm not sure about it. You know, if there's an E on the end, it's always difficult because it's sort of like, well, there's no accent above there, but... <laughs> So we have an E on the end, depends entirely on which language it's from, and whether it has an accent in some cases as well, as I said, uh, I don't know. Mm. But uh, he's Spanish, at least has a Spanish name. Spanish name is actually of Irish, Cajun, Jewish, and Lithuanian descent. Okay then, that's a very strange mix. And again, I, I'm never quite sure what Cajun even means. Uh, well, that's French, so... <laughs> Still, it's all over the place, at least. Um, okay, so... so If someone knows, please write in the comments why he's actually caught... Where the Spanish influence comes from. Um, uh, anyway, <laughs> getting to the actual album. As, yeah, as with the other albums, it's notable that... It's one of those albums that has a few kind of featuring tracks here and there. Mm. And for the most part, they're pretty damn great. Yeah. What's interesting, also, we're in the 13 that Zach de la Rocha of Rage Against the Machine makes an appearance. Mm. Interestingly enough, it's actually the second time that's happened because he featured on the track on the Rhino Jewels 2 as well. Mm. And apparently, in this case, it's regarded. It could be regarded as a sequel to that because of both songs vilifying society. Yeah, well, there are quite a few of their lyrics into that. Mm. Um. We're going to be very scattershot with this, but going all over the album, one one line that really made me go, wait, what? Notice me, senpai. Yeah, it makes an appearance in Oh Mama. I never thought I'd see the day when a hip-hop album says, notice me, senpai. Uh, it was just one of those... Uh, wh wh huh? Well, that called me off guard. Um, just for a bit of context, the exact guy, in, uh, guy in, the exact line even, <laughs> goes, Notice me, senpai, they cry when I choke their speak. I'll set this crooked city on fire to light the smokery. I don't know the... Uh, uh, make of that what you will. Yeah, the windows has always had that kind of... Kind of cryptic lyrics, maybe. Mm. Then again, that seems to that seems to be the sign of the better sort of hip hop and rap singers. Well, we were saying it's about Tech Nine as well, weren't we? It's, yeah. But it isn't singing about bitches and hoes and like yeah, more interesting topics. Yeah, I mean, well, considering that one of Tech Nine's songs discusses Boko Haram. Which, if you don't know, are basically one of the various terrorist organisations going around in the Middle East, just cutting people's heads off and all that sort of thing. But that's a few albums ago for Tech 9 so that's irrelevant here. Or it could be relevant. I mean, there's a few lines that make you go, what? <laughs> um, oh god. I won't be surprised if someone takes Legend Has It and puts certain images to it like Lonely Island, considering one of the verses opens with Every new record's my dick in a box. Yeah, I immediately knew it was reference to that. It's like, yes. I caught that. I was like, mm, yeah, I know exactly where you're going with that. <laughs> There's like quite a lot of references to things here and there as it is. Mm. I'm not sure how I'm doing that. The thing is, Run the Jewels has... 
Run the Jewels has a skill with, even when they're doing brag rap, it doesn't sound like your stereotypical brag rap. This is the way they were things, I think. It's kind of very clever wording. Yeah. Well, I think one of my favourite lines from the last album, I won the Jaws 2, which is a case of going, a wise man once said, fuck it, we all dead. Hmm. It's like, oh well, what's the point in doing, not doing something because, you know, well, you've only got a certain amount of life. Yeah. Said in a very specific way. Hmm. I mean, now, I'm sure most people are familiar with the term killing it. You know, really showing your chops as an artist and all that sort of thing. I mean, in Legend Has It, um, one of the verses goes, We are the murderous pair that went to jail and we murdered the murderers there, then went to hell and discovered the devil. So they have killed it so much that they're actually being arrested. <laughs> Hello. But another thing I do like about One of the Jewels is everything flows very nicely. Yeah. I mentioned mentioning in the Tech 9 album about there's certain kind of parts of rap where kind of the lyrical flow just feels right. Yeah. And Ron Jaws managed to pull it off in pretty much every single song. Mm. There's no stumbling or change of sudden change of pace or anything. It just it just works. Yeah. I, I'd say everything seems to fit together. It's more just some of the songs are a bit more memorable than others. I mean, I ironically, the two songs that stand out to me as not standing out. I know that's a contradiction in terms, but fuck it. Um, wasn't too hot on Cool Ticketron. Cool Ticketron is a kind of weird one, but on the other hand, that bass line is delicious. Mm. I mean, Ticketron, I'd say, I if it weren't for the beat and the rhythm and the flow being very... It feels like they must have been recording as... You know, their vocals were being recorded as the music was being recorded and written out and all that sort of thing. You know, the beat fits perfectly. So, Cool Ticketron, I wouldn't call the weakest track on the album because the flow and delivery is so on point. I would say Stay Gold is probably the weakest track on the album. It, it feels a bit repetitive and just... That doesn't feel like there's much to it. It it feels like a very stereotypical hip hop song, you know. Even so, this is this is one of the weaker songs now, and it still sounds pretty great to me. So it doesn't really stand out as much compared to other stuff, but I haven't really got that much of a problem with it. Mm. I personally would just I would just skip it. You know, it, I'd listen to most of the album, but when it comes to that, I just go eh, skip. I, I did find myself going... I'm a bit bored. That's fair. You think like Tip 9, the second half of the album also seemed to pick up a lot. Yeah. Starting from this record, after that, I mean, don't, get, don't get captured. Yeah. Because that song is really good. But from there on inwards, pretty much everything after that is really good. Mm. Um, well, I would say the first half of the album is stronger than Tip 9's one. Yeah. I'd say 2100 is one of my favourite tracks on the album. Well, the featured artist for that also appears on One of Jewels 2 as well. Yeah? Yep. And it's one of the best songs on the album as well. Um, it's interesting to know, I was saying earlier, about how um, the guy who did the mastering for this album, it looks like he's a long-standing collaborator with Run The Jewels, um, Joe Laporta, well, he did all the mastery for Black Star, which was when I found that out. It's sort of like, okay, yeah, this guy knows his stuff. Yeah, because both Black Star and Lunar Jewels stuff sounds very crisp. Yeah, it's just, it makes a difference when it's done really well like this. Yeah, it, it's one of those mastering of a lot of albums is sort of that's the mark between a crap album and a good album, really. Because if you think the mastering on Death Magnetic, you can imagine that. Mm. The mastering on that was really subpar, which ultimately meant that it was a far less memorable album. And I mean, say what you like about even the worst of Metallica's albums, you can definitely say that they're memorable. Hmm. I think the problem is, even if you have a really good album, if it's mastered badly, it just 
sounds off. Yeah. Well, I think that Time 1 for Moon to Sun might actually be a similar kind of issue, because something just sounds off there, despite the fact the music itself sounds decent. Mm. I don't know if it's for the same reasons, but I don't know. Yeah. Um... Yeah, I'm not recognising most of the bands that this guy has worked with. Um, Aesop Rock, Parquet Courts. Oh, he's done work with Zach De La Rocha. So, <laughs> for all we know, that could be how Run the Jewels was able to do stuff with him. Yeah, quite possible. I Maybe mean, they just met whilst recording at the same kind of time and yeah. happened to uh, make friends. Well, let us face it. With Tech Nine, he met both um, Jonathan Davis and Corey Taylor at the same uh, festival. So, according to the Wikipedia for De La Porta, he's worked with David Bowie, Foo Fighters, Vampire Weekend, The Killers, Tiesto, Imagine Dragons, Bon Jovi, Run the Jewels, Armin Van Buren. Yeah, he's done a lot of stuff. Yeah, it's all pretty high high caliber. Yeah. Oh, he's also written stuff for Clean Linguists. That's cool. Yeah. I really need to listen to more of their stuff. Same. What I've, li- I've heard I've liked. So, Talking of lyrical content, though, um, Thursday in the Danger Room stands out to me, lyrically. Hmm. Because the loosening to imply, yeah, it's about someone that they knew they got killed. So, yeah. Yeah. I'm just looking through. Um. Yeah. Uh. I'm just having a bit of a, uh. Which song was which moment? It's the one right at the end before the final track. Yeah. Now, the final track, I I was saying earlier... It's very much in two parts. Yeah, it's in two parts, and whilst it's framed like that, the second part feels more like a hidden track, if that makes sense. Well, I suppose it is listed as in track title-wise as being two songs, essentially. Mm. It's very much an intentional kind of two-parter. Yeah. Uh, it's just... Because it sounds quite distinctly different from the first part, it feels more like a hidden track than an outright present track. Which is kind of confusing, because normally hidden tracks are sort of like, well, we enjoyed it, but we didn't think enough of it to actually list it, but we still wanted to include it on the album. Hmm. Why is it going to get to, oh, you actually bothered, you know, listening through right to the end? How about bonus? Hmm. Oh lord. Uh, just one of the verses. Um, yeah, one of the verses in Oh Mama. I heard it in Brooklyn where all the sinners stay. You're running out of ways to go fuck yourself. I will innovate. The skin of your shitty grin will disintegrate. Every sickening sentence will cheapen the tricks you venerate. Set the phaser to face plate, incinerate. Run the jewels, run with the Borg, baby, assimilate. Again, I I never thought I never thought I'd see Star Trek references in a hip hop album. No, one of the jewels I've said before I've had I do a lot of thought a lot of you know, just references here and there to random stuff as part of the lyrics. Hmm. Can't think of anything off the top of my head right now, but I know they have done it before. I was kind of made me think, wait a second. Yeah. Um Oh. Just going seeing if I can find Um now, Talk To Me, that was actually apparently the first one they, uh, judging by what was said by Killer Mike, um, it was the first one actually released as a single or whatever. Hmm, I think I remember hearing that, yeah. Because his description is, this is a powerful one. We always knew that this would probably be the first one we were going to drop. This one just felt right. It opens it up. When people hear this, they're going to get a piece of the energy to come. We're definitely not playing games. <laughs> yeah, first release from Run the Jewels' third studio album. Um, released via the Adult Swim Singles program on the, okay. the two-year anniversary of the release of their second studio album. That is. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Shortly before the song's release, Killer Mike confirmed on Twitter that Run the Jewels 3 will be dropping in 2016. Today? Nah, just playing. This year, though, for show. <laughs> well, it kind of did. It's confusing as it all. It kind of hit, came out in 2016. <laughs> yeah, it came out on the 24th of December digitally, and it'll be coming out on the 13th physically. So, I don't know. 
Well, because they have a song called A Christmas Fucking Miracle. Yeah. <laughs> they probably thought, hmm, well, it's pretty much finished. It's not necessarily, like, properly pressed onto CDs or anything, but, hmm, let's release it at Christmas. Hmm. Which was actually the reason why they released it digitally early. It's like, that's not technically ready to be released in, in shops or whatever, but uh, it, it's finished recording. Let's just give it to them. As a little bonus. Possibly. It wouldn't surprise me. Uh, apparently, Cool Ticketron is named after an automated concert ticket purchasing system. That sounds valid. That's, that's the kind of thing that came to my mind the first time I heard that verse. Ticketron sounds like something, you know, an automated ticket machine. Yeah. Um yeah, the idea of Cool Ticketron is it's a brag rap with them imagining themselves performing at Madison Square Gardens which it is kind of a you've made it as an artist if you're performing there. Yeah. Well it wouldn't surprise me if they actually end up doing that as well. Mm. Regaining popularity. Mm. For good reason as well, because they're good. Yeah. Um I'm just looking through various things uh, to clarify on the matter of the final two tracks i guess you technically classify it as yeah. um a report to the shareholders and kill your masters um it's basically the idea of transitioning between um obeying and overthrowing well, this is a lot of their stuff is based around that mm. Mm. I think there's actually some on all three of their albums that are all about, you know, overthrowing the government or equivalents. Mm. I know there's at least one line in one of those. I think it's an angel duster in the second album, but this is just kill your masters. Yeah. Um, it's interesting to note how the very first track on the album, apparently it's discussing Killer Mike remembering his old troubled circumstances dealing dope. Um... Uh, <sighs> Uh, now the group understands their extreme talent and chemistry. They now have their eyes clear and are zoning in on their goals. Even though they have gone through some tough times, Run the Jewels has brought a new life to each member. LP lets the rest of the rap game know, you're going to need a bigger boat, boys. You're in trouble. <laughs> well, I think it's, you can kind of brag like that. But on the hand, they did a pretty damn good job of proving it. Yeah. I mean, that's the thing. I, that's one of the things I find with a lot of brag rap is you're sort of like, eh? Prove to me that your brags are worthwhile. I mean, Tech 9 when he does brag raps, he does back it up in the rest of the album. And this is it's the same case with Run the Jewels, you know. Their flow, their delivery, their pacing, their beats... Everything comes together crisp, clean, and clear. Hmm. But the, the beats and kind of the backing tracks of Randall's is really strong. One of the best out there I've seen. Oh, seen? Heard. Yeah. With a little bit of isn't that rap crap, but this is exactly the kind of thing I like. And if I can find some other artists that do beats this well, then I'll probably like them as well. Yeah. Um, final thoughts on the album? Oh, first time I listened to it, I thought it was pretty damn great. And I've been listening to it more since, and it's actually improving on me already, so... Same. I'd say it's probably at least the same kind of grade as Run the Jewels 2, mm -hmm. which is already a very good album, so... Yeah. Um, School-wise, I'd say 4 out of 5. Um, 4.25? I don't know. It's definitely at least a 4. Mm. I'm inclined to say it's verging on towards a 4.5 by the time I actually listen to it a bit more. Because mm. I'm still... The kind of thing is, Run the Jewels is... Quite often, there's so much going on at some point that so you just hear new little bits each time you listen to it. It's like, ah, I didn't notice that before. Yeah. Um, it's basically, if it weren't for Stay Gold and Cool Ticketron, it probably would be a five. Um, I think Cool Ticketron actually really works for me, so mm. might be why I give it a high rating. Yeah. That beat is strong, the actual flow is really good, and the kind of when you live at the garden, I think it just actually really, I really like that. Uh, Stay Gold, it just, it's kind of a drag for me. I think probably between Stay Gold and maybe Down, they're probably the ones that stand out least, but they're still pretty great. Mm. Um, maybe it's because this is where it really sounds like your very stereotypical hip-hop rap song, because the hook is, I got a bad girl, I got a brain with an ass girl. 
She got a mean bop. I got a lean to the way I talk. I way I walk even. And they got it like gold. G O L D G O L D. It's gold. G O L D G O L D. That's. I got a good thing with a bad bitch. That's rare, bitch. She don't even like you, hoes. She'll walk in the room, take her bitch gold. Uh, that that hook just really makes me go. Uh. So, as, as I say, if I was, <laughs> I'm just wondering what your reaction would be to something. Uh, what's it called? I oh, love again from One and Jaws Two. Because mm -hmm. that is way more obscene and pretty much the same kind of thing. Well, the thing is, I quite like obscene songs. I think the problem is, it's just really mundane. You know, it's something that I would hear from, like, Drake or Chris Brown or... Yeah. At least Drake actually has you know, some kind of skill. Not a strawberry Chris Brown. Um, oh, I can't think of his name. Um, pretty much all of his songs are obscene, and the only good thing I've heard from him has been a collaboration with Eminem, so... Um, oh, Lil Wayne. Mm, not sure about Lil Wayne. Mm. It just doesn't do anything for me from what I've heard. Yeah, well, that's what I mean. It's that... Well... Actually, no, that's unfair to this song. It doesn't sound as bad as anything Lil Wayne comes out with. <laughs> and the rest of the album is so damn strong anyway. Mm. Yeah, that's the thing. If you've got... The rest of the album makes up for this song. So it's... I said last night that when I was listening through it that I'd give it a four out of five and score hasn't changed. So I think it will just stay that way for a while now. <laughs> Maybe it will change as the year goes on. I don't know. I mean... I think it was something coming back to anyway. Yeah. I still go back to the other albums as well, so they definitely kept their their interest. Hmm. It was interesting because I got into them because I heard them in a small local record shop in Burton. I was like, oh, that sounds pretty cool. Huh. And then picked it up and I was like, yeah, so this is good. Uh, but yeah, um, definitely check this out. Um, it's another one of those if you're not all that keen on hip hop or rap, but you want to investigate. Uh, investigate that genre just to see if there's anything that you might enjoy, then this is definitely an album for that. I agree. But One of the Jewels is definitely one of the artists I would say check out if you have any interest in getting into rap or hip-hop. Whichever one it is. <laughs> if you have no interest in hip-hop and rap, then you're not going to be won over by this album. <laughs> Probably not, no. Maybe check it out anyway. If someone happens to have it around... And you feel like being a bit adventurous and give it a shot. Give yeah. A shot. Can't guarantee you'll like it, but maybe you will. And then you'll be like, oh, there is good rap out there. Yeah. Although people that say there isn't any good rap really annoy me because, well, they're wrong. <laughs> yeah. I mean, considering I can, off the top of my head, list at least five artists that most people probably wouldn't have heard of because they're not really mainstream of... Childish Gambino, Tech Nine, Run the Jewels, Hobson, Cunning Linguists, Cunning Linguists, um, Kendrick Lamar. Oh God, that's already six. Um, I need to check out more astronaut lists as well. Yeah. In fact, I think at some point I'll probably do a top ten rap artists that you should listen to kind of list. Hmm. Um. Because there's, there's plenty of good stuff out there. It's just a case of finding it. Yeah. Like any genre, really. Mm. That's why we review the shit we review, so that you know about the less well-known stuff. That's what we're here for. If we get you into about us that we like, then, well, that's a benefit for you. Mm. Anyway, um, that's it for this review. Uh, not sure... It'll probably be the new Claris album, simply because... It's coming out super soon. Yeah, and unless I can find anything that takes my fancy more... I mean, I might actually end up desperately looking for stuff because I'm very tepid on Claris, so... <laughs> um, <laughs> and I run the show, so I get final say. Um, <laughs> unless it's a Patreon contribution. So. But anyway, um, definitely check this album out. Um, 
especially in my case, uh, 2100. Uh, what would you say is the choice track for you, Pierce? Choice track? Um, probably don't get captured. Yeah, I can roll with that. Well, the first in danger room is good too. Hmm. Uh, uh, yeah, that's it from us. Um, catch you in two weeks, I guess. Hopefully. <laughs> as long as it works. Mm. Hopefully we'll be there. Honest. <laughs> um, yeah, that's goodbye from me. And goodbye from me. Take my soul